welcome back my uh, gardening friends uh, to a sunny dry day and I just wanted to show you uh, uh, my uh, square foot gardening beds uh, stroke coal frames now I'm doing a collaboration with small garden quest now his video should have gone up before mine so the uh, link uh, for that video is in the description below and no doubt he will comment and I will pin his comment so basically another skip find I found some more polycarbonate I've not cut this yet because of all the issues uh, around the world with the uh, COVID-19 and vegetables the shells being absolutely cleared there's no reason why that anyone can't have a little area and do some square foot gardening. Uh, this construction is very similar to the um, main raised beds and basically you could have them as big or as small as you wanted, wanted to. So basically we here we've used this tantalized wood that uh, I get for free. These sections here are the exact length that I was throwing away or was going to throw away from the main beds so these are 14 inches by 10 which equates to a square foot so some of the glass that I found in that skip won't now fit but these beds uh, will be uh, absolutely crucial to my uh, allotment gardening because I'm very poor at successional sowing so I'll be able to plant and sow in individual areas moving down these three square foot gardening beds so let's have a look at the construction so this is the third bed you can see all these crisscross uh, wires that they do hopefully suit just lining that one back up again because I have actually uh, tripped over a few times um, it is stretchy but you do get your feet caught in it and I've had to leave this up so I can show you today what I'm up to so these crisscross lines this is going to be the top of the the double layer I've excavated down and put these blocks in why are these blocks in you're saying if you're new well basically I don't want any soil touching any of the wood so to help that if you haven't already seen this uh, all these suggestions have come from our viewers I've put two screws in the end of that piece of wood it then sits on the plastic and on the concrete block and eventually you'll see me uh, raising the beds up to get them to, to the right level so that's how uh, that system works uh, I was plowing with different ideas but this is the one that I've used now the compost bins, the raised pallet collars and something else uh, that you'll see uh, at the end of the month on my rhubarb so this is one that I made earlier anybody that remembers uh, Blue Peter so I can just set this just looking down each of the corners making sure these blocks in there. and these are when this next one goes on it will be actually w uh, well below so all I've done with these is put two screws in to these scaffold planks to hold them together that's all that's actually needed wouldn't normally move these about but it does help people see how I actually uh, do this and even when they're all screwed together we can still move them about uh, and then we'll check to make sure they look uh, pleasing to the eye so I normally put the plastic in after can't see why I should put that in now so all I do now is put that into the corner using the two pieces of wood that uh, I, I normally use to lift this up the wood's then held in place and then I screw that into place and it should all then come level 
So I'm going to give you now a bit of pause and record as we go. I'm just going to show you what I actually mean by the two pieces of wood. I think I lost the other piece of wood earlier on. Basically I put one piece underneath, lift that up as a lever and then position that so it's roughly at the, the right height. So now my hands are free for putting in uh, that one corner. Always remember to drill pilot holes through the main piece of wood so that the posts will pull tightly to the actual uh, scaffold board or whatever pieces of wood you're using. It does help uh, to keep it all firm and secure. Now that bit's done, we can just uh, try and line it up uh, with the other beds uh, so it looks, uh, it's not going to be perfect. Uh, I did throw my tape measure away at one stage because uh, I was doing uh, too good a job. Um, so basically we said about the plastic underneath uh, those screws. Now this one will need an extra piece so you can still keep raising it up by using the plastic if you don't get it quite right. Or anything else that you can use that won't draw water up into the, uh, the wood. So that's all uh, nicely done uh, in, in a fashion. Now it's, uh, I need to line it to stop the soil touching the edge of the, uh, the board. Now this is this queen membrane. It comes in a certain length and a certain width and it's actually wrapped. So I've measured this plus a bit extra on this uh, membrane. I'm uh, using this as the square, the actual roll and then just using a straight edge on the dirt, nice and soft because of all the rain. And then this opens up to, uh, to fit nicely in there. And luckily enough, this goes all the way round with um, a little bit of an overlap. And uh, I use a staple gun and I'll just staple at the top so as not to punch, put any more holes in than necessary. And that's the plastic in. Now, I don't cover the top of the wood because that would stop the moisture from getting out. I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself for my uh, regular viewers, but uh, anybody that's new to the channel, uh, that's the reason why. Uh, we'll get this uh, taken off. Slash proof gloves, guys on the uh, hand that you're close to the knife and uh, we'll just uh, tidy that up. So we're just left then, we've got the staples quite close. Any water that does run down there will be absorbed by the wood and then will come out. Now people have asked, do I, well, am I going to preserve these planks? Probably not. I don't want to trap the moisture in for any moisture that may or may not get through here or down here or condensation uh, from below so I want the boards to, to actually breathe so I'm going to tidy all that up and then we'll step you back again and we'll finish the uh, rest uh, of the build now the reason for putting this plank on afterwards it's just so that I could actually find uh, the top of the board for the, uh, the plastic along there and easy to cut that board isn't in the best of condition, but it could be easily changed uh, in the future. As you see, it, uh, it's coming along nicely. I use um, decking screws uh, for all my builds because they're so easy to remove uh, when uh, you need to replace planks or you completely dismantle something. I uh, managed to build my uh, four bay compost bin or concrete, uh, compost storage bins and uh, some uh, part of these uh, raised beds using the old screws which does save quite a few pennies so that's the main part of the build done uh, this uh, main post in the middle of the screen there will be the same as that one at the other end sorry for the angle 
uh, that all uh, that area at the back there with the tall post will be my vertical gardening uh, we'll get that done uh, as soon as we can so now we've got this done uh, what am I filling it with so let's go and have a little look so we've got uh, quite a bit of soil left so we're trying to use that up the best we can because uh, one of these beds will be coming here uh, it'll leave an area there for four water barrels so that that those big beds will actually uh, be sitting here so I need to use some of this soil up so it's one part uh, my allotment soil which is of massive uh, quality so the no dig raised beds are basically going to be no dig but they're having a hell of a lot of my own soil which I've added over the years at least 15,000 litres of uh, compost to find on the side of the road that the cannabis growers unscrupulously throw away so these are my um, storage bins I keep saying compost I don't actually make compost in here but this is uh, my leaf mould uh, from uh, last autumn it's two years old obviously it's getting on for two and a half years old now so we're having uh, a th uh, one third of that as well as we move along this is my spent potato compost this is where I put all the stuff from the potatoes and it's still breaking down now and if you go into my playlist homemade liquid plant foods and compost mixes and activators uh, you'll see how I actually mix uh, make my own magic mix and these two bays have got the compost that we find on the side of the road and I think it's been this bay here that I've been taking a third so it's been equal, mixed equally and we end up with, with this uh, I've brought it up to um, a, a reasonable level now when you're creating your, your raised beds and boxes compost is okay but uh, you do need some uh, body in the soil and the uh, soil compost leaf mould leaf mould excellent at uh, moisture retention so basically that's what we've got there I've built it up so far these are the planks uh, that come at this length in bundles that uh, one of my uh, pot holders uh, get me and it just about fit well it's a little bit short are we fussy no we're not so in the raised beds we had to cut it off at that these were the planks for the supports for the wire to stop them bowing out so we had to cut so much off we ended up with these and uh, I've been placing them last week to try and find the best way to uh, to make these up and uh, having them 14 inches by 10 inches has worked really well and they have to be all nicely set and then I'm going to top them up again with the same mixture and then we end up with something that looks like this that we saw at the uh, start of the video so like I said um, Small Garden Quest uh, is joining me uh, in a collaboration on Square Foot Gardening he seems to have a little bit more knowledge I've learned from other people put my own spin on it I'm no expert but the people in my uh, my viewers always leave me good comments and before I start a task I'll always ask the question and uh, this these here will be just topped up lightly with perhaps some uh, good compost to stop maybe the odd weed and I'm um, thinking about uh, putting some uh, salt rock salt on the top of there uh, to deter uh, the slugs eggshells and coffee like I normally do uh, whether it works or not well she'll find out but I'm a little bit behind I could do with sewing these up and having that coal frame all up and running but this year's weather and this uh, uh, virus that's going about I hope uh, you're all healthy out there I know some of you are not self-isolating uh, the government are helping greatly here in the UK but this is uh, this, the final bed I have actually been uh, chopping these off these will stay uh, that should give me some uh, uh, a real good support but if you are uh, like the content of this video then please consider subscribing uh, you can look back at uh, some of the videos that we've uh, done and uh, at the end of March I'll be doing uh, a full uh, update 
but the plot is looking absolutely wonderful at the moment. Oh dear, it's a wee bit cold. But uh, I've hidden the microphone now, so you might not get as much wind noise, but you'll hear my heavy breathing and um, the nose is uh, running a little bit as well. So we'll have a little look at that now, make sure we're all nice and square, but please consider subscribing. Uh, not uh, you'll get notifications if you ring the bell for all videos. If not, and you're just a viewer and you're just stopping by, thank you very much. Please leave me a comment and uh, we'll see you next time. Happy gardening to you all. Till next time, my friends. Ta-ra for now. And don't forget, pop over and see Small Garden Quest, his video. He'll be in the uh, pinned comment and the link to the video will be in the description below.